Okay. Hello, hello, everybody. Um, if you're joining us for the replay, please uh, press hashtag replay. Uh, let us know you are here. This video series, Women on a Mission, showcases talented and fascinating women who have a strong sense of mission in their lives. If you are here with us live, please add a comment, say hello, let us know where you are in the world. I love seeing where everybody's joining us from. Um, and it's really nice to know that we've got company, but we really cannot tell unless you write a comment. Um, and certainly any questions for our guests today, anything resonates with you, maybe you've been to some of these places we're going to talk about, please add that to the comments, let us know um, your feedback, let us know your questions, and we will get to those um, as we go through um, today's presentation. I am Alain Stellian, the Midlife Empowerment Coach, and today I am thrilled to introduce Catherine Schutz. After a long career in finance, Catherine decided to pursue her passion in travel. She says, my specialty is wellness travel and travel for solos. My goal is to help each client have the most seamless, bespoke trip that will give them a lifetime of memories. My value is finding unique experiences for my clientele and being an advocate if something goes wrong, which today is unfortunately commonplace. Yes. So Catherine, welcome, welcome. It is just so um, exciting to have you here. And I'm just so thrilled to uh, be having this conversation with you because, as you know, I love to travel and I miss it. And um, I'm sure, you know, this has been a, a very interesting time for you in the travel industry, but we cannot wait. I know I've got big travelers in the group and we cannot wait to get back on the road. So I was so excited for you to come on and share with us where should we go after COVID? Like we're, we're, we're you know, let, let us just dream a little bit. Let us start planning um, because, you know, this is going to end and we are going to be able to get out there. Right. So, um, yeah. So I'm going to um, turn it over to you because I know you have curated a great list for us and, um, and I would love for you to share that list with our audience. Thank you. Yeah, I'm thrilled to be here. So thank you for the opportunity. I could talk about travel all day long, so <laughs> I will limit it. Um, this is truly my passion. So um, even though I do specialize in the wellness and the travel for solo, I do all types of trips. And my clients, I think, usually think I'm coming with them because I'm <laughs> always so excited. So it's like I'm planning my own trip. Um, yeah, today, some people are still not ready to travel. And I totally understand that. And, you know, we just saw Austria close down over the weekend, um, again, uh, hopefully for a short period of time. But I, I understand people are nervous and travel does not look the same as it did pre COVID. So my presentation today is sort of um, things you can do now and then things you can do later when you feel comfortable. So Yay. shall we just go through? Yes, and, yes, um, share, okay. share, please. All right, okay, let's see. Oh, and we just tried this, didn't we, Elaine? No, don't worry, you'll get it. Just, uh, <laughs> yeah, you can share your screen. Okay. All right, hold on one second. All right, uh, let's see, okay. All right, there it is. is that okay. Yeah. Is it full screen? Are we good? It's not. It's just it's okay. showing on the slides. So you probably just need to go to your um, presentation view or what is presentation yeah. view? Yeah, it is. Uh, let's see. Oh, um, I think I'd have this done, Pat, by now, but no. Okay. All right, I might have to go back in. Yeah, maybe go back in. Sorry, everyone, if you... Uh, oh, that's okay. Well, we'll uh, you know, I might start singing a song. You don't want to see that. That would be bad. Um, yeah, we were just talking about Catherine moved from Chicago to Asheville, North Carolina, and we were just riffing before we came on about how beautiful Asheville is because um, I actually had a chance to visit as well a few years ago. So um, that was really, it's a beautiful place and uh, there it is. So 
See how so, I'm good at filling up. I was filling up yes, your time you here for you. Very talented. <laughs> Thank you. Thank okay. you. Uh, there we are. All right. Um, so now, um, where you can go now is the Adirondacks. Um, this is Lake Cora in upstate New York. And Gorgeous. Yes, it's stunning. It's available for exclusive use. So they have 12 room camp. Um, so we're seeing a ton of multi generational trips or even trips with families and your COVID pods, whatever. Um, so you could have a private retreat here, has a spa, dining room, uh, canoes, kayaks. It's just, it's really a special place. Um, so that's okay. And then later, we're going to want to go to Italy. And that's on everyone's bucket yes. bu list. Yes, you guys, I was planning a trip for my 25th anniversary with Catherine, because she is <laughs> fabulous. So I was planning our 25th anniversary trip to um, Italy. And um, uh, what's that area called the, um, the uh, anyway, the all these, these, yes, thank you, the Amalfi <laughs> It's yeah, yeah. So long, yeah. I've forgotten. And right. uh, yeah, we had to put that on pause. But we're we're gonna go back. We're gonna revisit this. So I'm right there with you. Yeah, I'm ready to go to Italy. You'll be celebrating 25, 26, and 27. 27 exactly. Yeah. 28. I don't know. Hopefully not. Yeah. <laughs> Um, well, Italy is on everybody's bucket list. And even if you've been before, you know, there are so many different regions that you usually have to make two trips. Um, one neglected region, I feel, is the Lake Como area. You know, we go to Rome, Venice, Florence, Amalfi Coast, now Sicily and Puglia. But um, the Lake Como um, going up from Milan, the Dolomites, oh my gosh, just incredible. Um, so this Lake Como has views of the Swiss and the Italian Alps. This is showing Grand Hotel Tremezzo, which is amazing. It has five restaurants, an award-winning spa, and three pools, one of which floats on the lake that you can see there, yeah. which is very special. Um, and I will just throw in, we do, um, I am a virtuoso agent, so that's um, a special consortium of agents. And the beauty of it is that uh, the properties, we can book any type of properties we want, but when we book virtuoso properties, we do get special perks for our clients, which is usually um, daily breakfast, upgrade if available, uh, credit of some type at the property, and VIP status. It, um, so Grand uh, Hotel Tremezzo is one of such properties. As Isn't Lake Como also where George Clooney hangs out? Yes. Let's not well, forget. Well, you might have the Clooney and Damal sighting. So, you know. I like, should have thrown that in. Not only. Absolutely. The, That's a big uh, plus for me. Uh, the landscape scenery, but also the people <laughs> scenery. Exactly. Uh, all right. So, this um, is Mexico's Riviera Maya. So, just south of Cancun. Very easy to get to from a lot of places in the U.S. Um, there is a uh, development there called Mayacoba, and this property right here is the banyan tree Mayacoba. Um, Mayacoba is on the ocean, but also on these um, lagoons that are sort of will make you feel like Venice. So you see the boats, the little boats there yeah. take you up down the lagoons, and it's it's really amazing. So you've got sort of the jungle and the ocean. Uh, you can visit the other properties in Mayacoba. You can have dinner or breakfast on one of those boats, which is very romantic. Um, just a really neat property. So Banyan Tree, uh, they also have boat bikes that you can bike to all the properties. They have a little Spanish town that you can visit with a church and some restaurants and shops. Um, Banyan Tree, though, is 129 butlers served bungalows and villas uh, among the mangroves or the beach. You can choose. And the mangroves are very special. I would encourage you to consider those. Uh, they even have overwater bungalows. 
And this is really like the Venice of Mexico. Uh, the other properties there are the Fairmont and the Andaz, which is the Hyatt property. So you can visit and eat at all of those pro um, properties as well. Very, very special um, uh, experience. And unlike other Mexico experiences, I'd say. <laughs> It's safe right now to go to Mexico. Like they do a good job with the with it you is. know the COVID safety. Yeah, very COVID safety. Um, in fact, I traveled there during COVID to see because it was open, and I was so impressed. They took your temperature at every property you went in. Everyone was wearing masks. Yeah. It was it was very impressive. Um, Someone may ask a question. There has been there have been a few stories in the news lately about some shootings. Those are in Tulum, which are farther south. Uh, it's drug related, and these communities. I would only send clients to these types of communities, which are gated, which have tons of security. There never will be a problem at these okay. properties. Right. Um, yeah, I mean, we are talking bucket list uh, destinations, you know, so these, these are going to be, uh, yeah, these are going to be handpicked uh, by Catherine to be safe and, um, you know, wonderful places to visit. Totally. So then for our later is the Maldives. And we're seeing a huge demand for that. Um, just so you know, as a traveler, um, I'm booking into 2022, 23, and some cases 24 because of the demand. Um, yeah, wow. it's crazy. And remind us, where are the Maldives? Are they in the Indian Ocean? I can't remember. Or are they yes, in yes. Okay. So, um, not a hop, skip, and a jump to get over there, but really an incredible experience. And it can be combined. I would say this would be the latter part of a trip, but can be combined um, with other destinations. Um, beautiful. This is where overwater bungalows started. Um, tons of privacy, tons of COVID protection. Um, and then if you're a diver, the atoll is close to more than 40 prime diving sites. Wow. Um, you, and you can do a lot of experiences by small boat, um, just a really, really great experience. I'd say, you know, it's romantic and most people think of the Maldives for a honeymoon or anniversary. Right. But I'd say it's also offers a lot for families too. So um, to definitely know. adults only properties if you're looking for the romance, but then there are family um, oriented uh, properties. And just a quick note that Deborah has joined us. Um, Deborah is on Long yeah. Island, although she says she would love to visit Asheville. And she says Italy is on her bucket list. So um, Deborah, Good. welcome and uh, thanks for letting us know we'll we'll see what else appeals to you yes thanks for joining us deborah and you're welcome to visit me in Asheville anytime you're down i welcome anyone to come visit me um okay so now for our now is saint lucia um depending on where you live it's it's an you can get a non-stop or otherwise uh, usually flying through miami or somewhere in florida um, just a lush area, wonderful, incredible restaurants. This is Sugar Beach, um, which lies in the Piton Valley between Gros Piton and Petit Piton. So the two, um, we'll call them mountains. But the iconic, they're like, uh, uh, I don't know, cones or something, right? They're very yeah. cool looking. Yes, exactly. Um, you know, the, this property has 100 acres of rainforest, shimmering white sands, emerald gardens. Um, there are a few properties in St. Lucia that are open air. So there are three walls and the fourth is open. So if you do need air conditioning, be sure that you're aware of the properties that are open air. Um, I know some people just don't like that, but um, it's it's a really special place and um, very neat. If you're feeling indulgent, you can take a helicopter from the airport and the views are amazing on the way up. Wow. 
And is and the, the property. So do you recommend when you go to St. Lucia that you go on the beach or the properties in the um, mountains with the some of them? I know uh, open wall, all of that, but they seem to be more known in St. Lucia for the properties up in the great question. The mountains, right? Yes, great question. So again, you know, know what, and this is where a good travel advisor comes in handy, is that this property sits on the beach, but yes, many of them do sit up in the hills. And so it's, you know, a good track or a shuttle to the beach. Right. Um, again, very good for romance. Um, there are some resorts here for families, but yes, it's mainly known as a great romantic place. Yeah. Um, great restaurants, so not a lot of all-inclusive places if people are looking for that um, because they want you to go out and sample all the great restaurants. Uh, and then for our later Greece, again, a big bucket list destination, but people forget that there are many islands in Greece. I know Santorini and Mykonos are usually at the top of the list, but there are some amazing islands besides those. Um, and then Athens, the mainland, we'll call it, is, you know, in the Four Seasons has opened up. Amman, I believe, has opened up. So if you go a little bit outside of Athens, there's a ton to explore. Um, so just a lot of neat things. A cruise is an ideal way to do it if you want to see a lot of islands and not have to do ferries or inter-island air. Um, and cruise lines can range from 100 people on up to a few thousand. So lots of different options. Um, or you can stay at this uh, one resort and day hop, you know, to different islands. Um, this is Canaves Ia with an intimate 18 rooms, um, wow. infinity pool, and view of the caldera. So you can't go wrong. There are great wine in Greece, great food, of course, great beaches, just um, really wonderful. And I will tell you, wherever you do go internationally, you're going to find the locals are just going to bend over backwards. They are so happy to see tourists yeah. back. They missed us. Um, yeah. it's, it's just amazing. It should make you feel good that, you know, a lot of these countries, a huge part of their GDP depends upon tourism. So do know that you are helping their economy as well. So I, I, I don't know if you know this, but I am half Greek and um, growing... I know it's like so yeah. funny. So and and growing up, I went to um, we went we I grew up in in France and we went to Greece every summer, uh, mostly in yeah. Athens. But recently, my family uh, we all went back. My dad took us all back, and we um, spent some time in the Pel Peloponnese, where we're yeah. from. And there's a I can't really remember the the name of the resort in the Peloponnese that was just gorgeous. And they're building more. I mean, there's just yeah. a lot of development. Um, but I have not spent enough time on the islands. And so that's very, I don't, I don't oh. really want the party island. Like I know Mykonos oh. is, um, but Crete intrigues me. Crete and Rhodes. Right? And yes. there are some even lesser known islands that are just phenomenal. Yeah. 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 And, and that's neat. You're the opposite of most people. Most people go to see the islands, but the Peloponnese, oh my God, there's just, right. there's so much to see as you yeah. well. Know, yeah. So. And some, and you know, ancient runes. I mean, there's yeah. so much history there too. The food right. is to die for. It's right. so good. And right. like you said, I, the Greeks are very, very friendly. I um, mean, I don't speak Greek. I'd lost the Greek I knew as a child and it's, doesn't matter, you know, they're, they're, I'm American, they, uh, yeah, they, they, they're just very welcoming, and like, and, and yes, I mean, it's uh, such a huge part of their industry is, is tourism, um, they're so dependent on it, so, so exciting to have people traveling again. Oh, definitely, yeah, exactly. Um, okay, so this is, um, so Canada's oh. open now, yay. Um, uh, Polar bear expeditions are on a lot of people's, you know, bucket lists, and you don't have to go to the Arctic. Uh, you can definitely do one in Canada, and um, it's accessible. It's phenomenal. 
you know, it's a wildlife safari is what it is. You're going to see beluga whale, arctic fox, caribou, and polar bears. Um, I will tell you global warming. I have been on one and it is sad. Global warming is affecting these animals. So the polar bears are not as um, visible as you usually see, but the depending upon the operator you go with, they do try as hard as they can to make sure you're seeing the polar bears and it's amazing. Um, one of those uh, suppliers is Natural Habitat Adventures. So they run trips midsummer, which is perfectly um, for perfect for families. So midsummer to fall, um, you're going to sea kayak, coast and zodiacs, and ride in tundra vehicles for close, close encounters with the bears. Um, some hiking, just a really different terrain that we're not used to and really fascinating. And do you think is summer the best time to go just yeah. because of the, you know, cold, I guess, in the yeah. winter and things? Okay. And are, yeah. are you talking about doing a, like a cruise or like a ship or are you? Uh, no, it's, well, you can do either, but um, I, oh, I should have put the picture up. It's this funky vehicle with the big wheels and they yeah, cart yeah, yeah. everyone around and it's really neat. And the bears come up close to the vehicle because oh, wow. you know, it's, it's their territory. So they're yeah. not afraid of us. The yeah. same with an African safari. Yeah, um, yeah very neat. Um, early fall would be the shoulder season. Okay. So maybe a bit cheaper. It's not yeah. a cheap trip, but right. definitely on a bus bucket list for a lot of people. Um, and then we'll go to the other bucket list trip, which is Antarctica. Wow. Of course. Um, and vastly different, even if you do do an expedition to the Arctic, the Arctic and Antarctica are complete opposites. It's really an amazing um, uh, thing. So Antarctica is where you're going to see the penguins um, and penguin colonies just hundreds of them, leopard seals and whales. Um, Quark expeditions, they do 199 people and that's a ship with two helicopters. Um, they even um, have a little seven person submarine that goes underneath. Oh my goodness. Amazing. Um, hella hiking. So you're hiking on the ice, sea kayaking again. And if you're adventurous, you can do some overnight camping on the ice. Wow. So I know going into winter, people probably are saying, oh, they're stop like, with the cold right. Yeah. But it's, you know, these are true bucket list things. And what is the time of year you would do this? Because I know it's the opposite season down there, although right. at the pole, I don't know what happens, you know, in Antarctica, yep. is it just always cold? <laughs> no, well, it is always, yeah, cold, definitely. But the season is starting now. So okay. November, December, January. Right, that's their yeah. summer, quote unquote, that's exactly. coming up, right, yes. okay. Interesting. Yeah. So you don't see polar bar bears in Antarctica. I'm going to sound stupid asking no. this, I think. But no, it's different. It's just the a polar really bears different are the North Pole and then Antarctica yeah. is so yeah. interesting. This is the one continent I have not been to. So oh, it's like, um, one of my one of our daughters is like, I got to go to Antarctica so I can say I've been to every continent. Right. So, um, yeah. That's yeah. Like, and a lot of people good. don't find it appealing because you know, it's cold, but it's, it's so amazing that I do, you know, I just think it should be on a list. It's, you right. know, and you, can, you can pair you... it, I would think with something like, I mean, you're, you're going to Antarctica probably through, 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 through Patagonia, right? And I've been to Patagonia, exactly. which is gorgeous. So, you know, Southern Chile in particular. Right. So you're definitely, you know, especially if you have the time, you would like to combine it with something else. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Um, okay. And then my last set is now the Yellowstone National Park. Now I would, I would encourage people to do this not in summer, if you can, because there has just been an influx of tourists um, wow. to the national parks during the summer. So it's not as enjoyable. It's still stunning, but the services are shorthanded. Some of the restaurants closing, things like that. So 
Um, if you can do a shoulder season, even winter is stunning at these national parks. Um, I'd highly encourage you to do that. Um, so November to late April would be an ideal time. Uh, Austin Adventures offers a trip by snow coach and you'd see bison, elf, moose and wolves. Um, so Boy, you know, I didn't realize my presentation is really animal centered. I must, I must <laughs> Who have doesn't? Been. We all love animals. Why not? <laughs> yes. No. Maybe we can't get in with the whole crowd of people yet. Yeah, so we'll exactly. Animals. So we, the animals are safe. Well, hey, you had <laughs> Italy and Greece in there. There were, I don't I think did. there were animals there. Yes. Yeah. So I highly encourage you to check out the national parks. This just being one, of course, there are many incredible parks. And then, you know, I always tell people that I think an African safari just has to be mandatory. <laughs> I know yeah. it's expensive. Yeah. I know it's hard, you know, though it's getting easier and easier to get there. But I will tell you, it is an experience unlike any other Um uh, the animal sightings and the nature, um, the survival of the fittest, um, things that you see are just really incredible. And the game drivers and spotters are so talented oh, that yeah. you're, yeah, you're always usually going to see a, a huge amount of animals. Um, so this is Kenya's Masai Mara. Um, you know, you can do Tanzania, Tan, Tanzania, Nagora, Nagora crater. crater is yeah. amazing. You'll see the big five in there. Oh, yeah, right. Um, you can do it by Land Rover, even hot air balloon, which is really neat. And then a trip like that, if you do Kenya and Tanzania, you could end at the beach in Zanzibar. Oh, so right. that's sort of a nice combination. Um, the other entry level safari, you know, if you're just starting out, I'd say is Cape Town um, doing the wine district in South mm. Africa and then doing safari in Kruger. Um, those are great starters, but by no means, I have clients whose first safari was gorilla trekking in Rwanda. So um, I don't think it really matters. And each country is so vastly different that, um, it's just amazing. Yeah, and I'll add my two cents because the the yeah. we did uh, Kenya, Tanzania, and yeah. we did the gorilla trekking. And um, wow. I, I mean, I have to tell you, the thing what I loved about the East Africa option um, also is it's very family friendly. So it was really fun to do, and they're all great with families. So we. Uh, really enjoyed taking our girls when they were younger. And I would think for intergenerational families also in terms of including grandchildren, that's a great Absolutely. option. The one thing that I was not prepared for it was how sedentary it was because you were really limited um, in terms, you couldn't, you know, like camp. go jogging out in, you know, anywhere. I mean, you're, you've got nature all around and you were in a vehicle a lot. So I think the next time I do a safari, I, well, that's why we decided to do the trekking in uh, Rwanda and Uganda yeah. because it was more active and we wanted right. that. And of course, oh my God, the gorillas, unbelievable. I bet. I haven't done it. I'm, oh my goodness. So it's, it's literally, amazing. yeah. But I think the next time, if I was going to do this kind of big five type thing, I think I would look, and I know in the private game reserves is where you can do more walking safaris in these national parks in the East Africa yeah you're limited because they're national parks. So they don't allow you to just, you know, start go up and, and like walk around even with a guard. Yeah, so I, I don't know. That's my understanding. No, that's an excellent point. Um, and again, that's where travel advisor comes in because they're going to ask those questions. Yes. So what do you want to do? On safari, I did actually do some walking safaris besides. So normally you're going to do a morning safari yeah. and then an afternoon safari and um, by vehicle. But there are walking safaris during the day that are amazing. In fact, we were uh, almost stormed by a mother elephant and her babies. And luckily, some uh, vehicle came by to pick us up because yeah. the the scout was even a little nervous. Wow. But 
I wouldn't dissuade anyone from yeah. that no, you no, are totally you, yeah. taken care of. Yeah. Um, but yes, there are definitely more active yeah. camps and that is the beauty. Also the private reserves, um, private camps, there aren't as many vehicles. So you're not pulling up to a ton of vehicles. Everybody's watching the same thing. And exactly. Yeah. Like you're at the drive-in theater. Right. Yeah. It's, you know, it's just two or three, four by four vehicles. And that's really cool. Um, but the animals, um, real fast, my son was with me and he was probably 13, 14 at the time. And he, he had wanted a nice camera. So I got that for his um, birthday or Christmas. And then he was sort of complaining and he said, well, I don't have a telephoto lens. Well, he, we were on the vehicle and a leopard walked right by us oh. and stopped and looked up at him. Oh, and he God. has a picture. We blew it up. It, doesn't even look like a 13 or 14 year old took it because this leopard was so close. So we joked with him the rest of the trip that, you know, telephoto was not exactly. It was not. Yeah. Although I would recommend absolutely you get the best yes. camera you can if you go on one of these trips. And with, right. I mean, you should see the people with these amazing long lenses they had. I mean, it, it will definitely. Totally. Uh, and Deborah says yeah. that uh, her African safari has been postponed because of COVID. And they yeah. had uh, they had chosen Botswana so that they could also oh, see Victoria Falls. I'm not as familiar with ooh. Botswana. Yes, beautiful, good choice. Is that your first, Deborah? Yeah, let us know. Is this was this yeah. is this going to be your first safari? That's that's oh uh, that's God. an interesting destination. Sounds great. Yeah. Um, Mentioning cameras, though, a lot of these expedition ships or suppliers will rent you, lend you oh. cameras. Oh, yeah, it's good. a nice, um, we did the Arctic with Nat National Geographics and Lindblad, and they had cameras to borrow, That's which really was... Nice. Yeah. And, and, you know, if you don't know if you're going to use a camera a lot, or you don't know what type it is, or you don't even want to lug it with you, it's a nice feature. Yeah. So. De Deborah says it is her first safari. So Yay. that's exciting. Yay. Oh my gosh. You'll uh, have to report back. <laughs> I know. Yeah. We'll have to hear. So when you do go, I hope you can go soon. Um, nice. So Catherine, I want to hear, I don't know if you've got more slides, but I want to make no, sure I, I yeah. would love for us to learn a little bit more about how you work with clients and like what services you offer. Um, tell us yeah. more about that in case somebody's interested in, you know, because I know from experience that Catherine's a, you know, got all the resources and also the local resources, right? I mean, it's like, you know, you, you can access, uh, you know, the people on the, on the ground. So it's not like right. just you planning from afar and, uh, you know, and, and what happens if something goes wrong on a trip? So like, what, yeah. what are your services? And that is the, the takeaway I would want to say that working with a travel advisor, we are your advocate. You know, I've had people in Italy, uh, one had kidney stones and, I was able to, I talked with the hotel manager because they know us and our clients are special to them. So he uh, called a um, doctor who teaches at the University of Rome, came to the woman's hotel room on a Sunday, wow. um, told her that he thought it was kidney stones, got her in for an MRI the next day, got her medication, you know, so it's at a, I think it was a hundred dollar cost or something. It was right. crazy. Um, but yes, that is, I've had people sick in Africa, you know, it's just, it's inevitable that something goes on like wrong. flights get yeah. delayed or you know oh my like God. or yeah especially or, now yeah. yeah um and that's what i am there for and yes i always have people on the ground wherever my clients are going so it may be 7 to 15 hour time difference for me but my people are there and you have a local contact as well um so really how it works, it gets better and better as I get to know a client because it is a sort of a concierge service. I need to know what you like and don't like to make your trip as perfect as possible. Um, I do charge on 
I don't charge on regular just hotel bookings or very, something very simple. But if it's putting together an itinerary for you, even comparing cruise lines, um, that type of thing, it's $150 to $250 per trip fee. Um, and that includes everything. That includes That's all amazing. of my time. That well, sounds very reasonable to me. It is. Now, so this is a new aspect to travel advisors. Um, a lot did not used to charge. We are paid by, you know, our suppliers. So yeah. there's no hiding that fact. But um, that has gotten, you know, whittled down over time. And we do spend a lot of times, I may go through 20 revisions on an itinerary with a client until we get it exactly perfect. Yeah. Um, so my time then is you know, yours to use. Um, yeah, we just, we like to know as much about you as possible, previous trips, what you liked and didn't like. Um, we have at Virtuoso something called the Wander List, and you can go in and actually make your bucket list. It's sort of fun and That's read cool. articles and see things. Um, yes, yeah, so just a lot of yes, and we have, you know, my colleagues, we have about 150 people at Largue. So someone is always traveling, someone is always in a destination, and we're sharing what's the best restaurant in Milan, um, who's the best um, for a bike tour here, um, and then we share the little tips that we get by traveling that you can't always find on Google. Oh, for sure. Yeah. Well, yeah, thank definitely. you so much for your time. Uh, thanks to Deborah for joining us live. I look forward to hearing what other um, viewers have to say and um, really uh, wonderful presentation. It's like making me, I don't think salivate is the right word, but it's like <laughs> practically like it I'm is. ready to jump on, a, on an airplane now and get and pack my bag. So um, thank <laughs> you for that. That's, it was very inspirational and um, just, um, you know, I think we're just also getting ready. So we're, everybody's going to be ready to go. And this is just uh, more, just more ideas, more, um, you know, bucket list ideas. I love these. And uh, I would, you know, and I'm, let me just, I'm sorry to interrupt you. No, One not at all. Thing, if, you know, even if you don't want to work with me or aren't ready to travel, send me an email. I'll add you to my email list. I send out a nice short newsletter. Yes. I have an access. I'll give you access to the Virtuoso magazine, which is full of dream um, material. So just fun stuff. You can view it online and um, just get you dreaming again. So yes. I'd love to help with just that. If nothing Yeah, else. <laughs> no, I'm on, I'm on Catherine's list. I get uh, her newsletter. I get uh, and I think I've, uh, if you friend, if I friend you on Facebook and you can see where you're traveling, it's really yes. fun. So yeah, so definitely connect with Catherine. She's a great yeah. resource to use professionally or just to kind of see what she's up to and learn from, uh, from everything she's doing. So I definitely encourage everybody to do that and uh, appreciate your time. And just thank you so much for, um, for doing this with us. And for everybody, if you enjoy these videos, please watch for more coming weekly. Um, until then, be well and stay safe and happy Thanksgiving, everybody. Yeah, same to you. Thank you so much.